Good afternoon. Um, I have to start by saying, as I was thinking about what I was going to talk about, um, I really struggled because there's so much to talk about in digital health. Um, and I wanted to make it interesting and hopefully bestow some kind of knowledge, which um, I'm going to lower the bar for you. You're not going to be all that impressed with anything I say. Um, but uh, so I thought that I would talk through the journey that I had in digital health and kind of weave in some of the learnings that we've had at ClickWell Care and um, some of the things that are important from the implementation perspective, from the patient's perspective, and the provider's perspective as we really think about moving some of these technologies and services into healthcare. So the fir and I'm going to go through a few themes. So the first theme is know, understand, and listen. And I learned that, um, as um, was alluded to, at my job at Disney. So um, I never thought I'd become a physician when I was started there. But one of the things that was really interesting when working there was the, the attention to detail that was put in terms of really understanding each customer and understanding the data that drives customer behavior, consumer behavior, and really then thinking about how do you pull that data and integrate it in through all of the touch points that they had with Disney. So if any of you have gone to Disney World recently, they have something called the Magic Band, which literally takes all of the data that you have within the Disney portal, your credit card information, and really personalizes your experience as you go through the Disney park, theme park. And wouldn't it be amazing if you brought that to healthcare? So that was one of the first really important les lessons. And really the le lesson that I walked away from is knowing your customer, understanding your customer, and listening. And whether that's your patient or the customer, it's really important to pay attention to that as we as we roll out new technologies. And the mobile device, obviously, is an amazing tool that will be able to collect some of this data for us and really help us think through how do we personalize that experience and actually deliver an experience that's really interesting and innovative in healthcare. The next lesson is it's not just about the technology. And I learned that um, while I was here at Stanford. Uh, when I first started, one of the things that we did was actually help roll out telemedicine e-visits, um, something called e-care at, um, at Stanford with Epic. And when we rolled it out initially, we were so excited. We thought we were in the valley, like everyone's going to use video visits. I mean, come on, we're right here. Everybody's young. Everybody wants to use video visits. And guess what? Nobody used it. And we had very low uptake initially in primary care. Um, and then the other big lesson was, which was interesting, we then even tried, we said, hey, we have, we have this amazing on-site clinic. Our chief strategy officer is here who helped drive our work into the employer clinics. And we had an on-site clinic at Qualcomm. And again, we were like, these guys are tech savvy. They're engineers. They're going to want to use video visits. And guess what? They did not want to use video visits. Um, they actually used to go to their on-site clinic as a break from healthcare, um, sorry, from work. So going to the on-site on clinic was actually a break. So if they did a video visit, they'd actually have to stay at work. And that wasn't that exciting to them. And that was like an aha moment. It's really thinking about, huh, it's not just about the technology. It's how you weave the technology into the care model. And how, how do you actually get patients to engage with the care model? Because when they're interacting with healthcare, they're not interacting with us because of the technology. They're interacting with us because of the care we deliver. And so how do we actually weave the technology in so it's almost ubiquitous and within the system as opposed to it right there in their face? And so that's how we came up with ClickWell Care. Um, Click All Care is a primary care, it's a virtual primary care clinic. We call it Bricks and Clicks. Um, so it does have an in-person component to it, which we found was very important, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. And we're really focused on how do we deliver an ecosystem of health and wellness. So how do we create an end-to-end -end health experience and not just deliver clinical care, but focus on mindfulness, nutrition, and physical activity. So we thought about how do we actually create a model where we work with wellness coaches, we leverage technology, and allow the patient to pick how they want to interact with us and when they want to interact with us in a convenient method. We were trying to solve a problem in the organization. We rolled out the ACO in 2014, and what we found is that many patients between the 18 and 45 age group were, didn't really want to, um, they weren't really seeing their primary care physicians. And in fact, many of them would go have touch points with urgent care or the emergency room as opposed to selecting a primary care physician. So the organization was like, hmm, what can we do about this? And the thought was, well, hey, why don't we leverage video visits? Um, 
And so when we actually sat down with some of the patients in that group, the 18 to 45 year old group, and that was the other thing is we really targeted who we were gonna make the solution for. So we didn't try to boil the ocean, we didn't try to make it for everybody. We picked a select group, which was the rising risk and younger population, and think about how do we create something that would be usable by them. We asked them, you know, hey, would you wanna just use video visits and not actually come in and see us? And they were like, absolutely not. I actually wanna have a relationship with my primary care physician. That was a big aha moment for me because I did not think that age group actually cared about having those visits. But they absolutely did. They said, you know, if I could have a way that technology would enhance my relationship with the patient, but, I'm sorry, with the um, physician, so, but I can have a continuous relationship with the physician, that would be incredibly interesting. And that was actually the most important thing they cited. I even had thrown out there, I'm like, okay, what if we hand out a Fitbit or we hand out other technology devices? Would that want make you want to engage with video visits? And they all said, no, we really want to have the relationship. And if that was the add-on to be able to help us achieve our health goals, that would be great but the relationship's really important. And so that's why we designed what we did. And so the clinic actually, um, the way it works is we have physicians who, and we have extended hours, so we're open from seven to 11, seven to 9 p.m. Monday through Sunday. Um, we have, we, we allow patients to pick whether they wanna interact with us by, via phone, video, or in person. And um, we also offer wellness coaching at no charge. So every patient has the choice of selecting a wellness coach. We allow them to pick. We do recommend when we think wellness coaching would be helpful. But the other big distinction is we don't use wellness coaching for chronic care management only. We actually use it to engage them to say, hey, what health goal do you have? And we almost make every patient when they come in pick a health goal, whether that means sleeping better, I'm the mom of a six month old, so that would be my health goal for this year. Um, and Or if it's, you know, I wanna walk more or I wanna run a marathon or really picking some simple goals that they wanna achieve and having the wellness coach kind of interface with them. The other big thing that this did for us um, was it allowed us to be able to leverage some of the digital health technologies that were more consumer focused and actually bring it into the clinic and have the wellness coach interface and manage that data more so that the physician wasn't as burdened with managing that. Um, Cause just remember for all the physicians in the room, we don't like work to have to work too much more than we already do. But um, so that was an important thing. And then we worked with our digital solutions group and our um, digital team and they helped create this interface. They actually rehauled the My Health app, not for this specifically, they were doing that anyway, but we actually leveraged video visits through phone in person. And let me talk about some of the initial findings before I go more to the other themes that I have. Um, so if you see the percent of visits, we actually were successful with what we, we aimed to do. We um, reached 18 to 40 year olds predominantly. Um, we predominantly had female patients over male. The average age in our clinic is 36, as opposed to 50 year olds in primary care clinic, in the, the traditional primary care clinics. We have about 2,000 patients. We do over 5,000 um, visits. We've done over 5,000 visits since we've been live. We have same day access and convenience. And actually that is the one biggest engagement um, piece that has driven people and kept us in. So basically what that does is that attracts them to make the appointment if they're not sure if they wanna join our clinic. Once they meet our amazing faculty physicians, they decide to stay. And then once they understand the model, they're even happier. So that's kind of been the driver though, is the same day access and the convenience. If you notice, we have video visits um, at 25%, phone 32% and in-person 43%. We actually have now just crossed over where we have more virtual than in-person, um, which I'm sorry, I'm gonna go back to that for a minute, which has been really important the other thing that's really interesting to note, in our population, desktop usage is still pretty high, even though um, we thought initially, this was another aha moment, that mobile phone would be more usable. And if you just think through what the reasoning is behind that, holding your phone up here is a little difficult for a visit. Um, and then the other big learning, I'm gonna fly through some slides, but the other big learning too is that interestingly, older patients were willing to engage with us virtually first. And remember, these are healthy people, so it's not so much that they couldn't get to the clinic, it was actually that they were okay with engaging with technology first, whereas younger patients were wanting an in-person visit first and then engaging via video visits um, thereafter. Not surprisingly, video visits is an incredibly efficient modality. And then moving on to the next theme, so make it easy and break down the silos. And the reason that's really important is we really thought about how do we make being healthy easy? And I think that's one of the big things that we're trying to offer through the clinic is through partnerships. So we offer free same day medication delivery with a startup that we work with and has been amazingly helpful. Patients are incredibly helpful about, in, incredibly pleased about the fact that their medications, if they're doing a video visit, come to their door within two hours. We're also working with fitness partners now and actually meal delivery services to roll that in. So if you're 
you're working with your wellness coach and your goal is to eat healthier, we'll give you some prescribed menus that we think would work for you or prescribed grocery lists. We also work with some of the fitness partners to leverage some of the um, fitness training modalities, like for example, Under Armour's Health Box is something that some of our patients like using and our wellness coaches actually interact and use that. The thing that's so interesting about all this is it's really the nexus of internet of things and health, and that's where I think where we could go next is really interesting. I'm, I'm sure many of you are aware of the Amazon Echo, the home health hub um, that Samsung is rolling out, but what's really interesting is we, we, what we need is really to have healthcare creep into our lives and break down the silos. And what I mean by that is often healthcare is here in our life, and then all of our consumer activity is here. What we want to do is merge the two together so that in every activity that you do, you're thinking about, or it's actually easy for you to engage in healthy behavior. So eating better, um, exercising more, or using, the, for example, the Amazon Echo to feed you a healthy habit or remind you to take your medication or something to that effect. And then just to talk about the wellness coaching, we have seen actually really good engagement. We've had about 35% of our patients engaged at an 83 adherence rate, percent rate in terms of wellness coaching. And we've achieved some interesting goals too. We have weight loss, stress reduction activity, nutrition education, hyperlipidemia um, improvements. And then the last thing is really just keep it simple. I think we often try to boil the ocean in healthcare, and we, we, you know, we need to remember that most of us still have paper insurance cards. Um, and I stole that line from somebody in the audience. <laughs> um, and it's true, because I think the authentication of, of understanding how do we ac actually leverage technology to make the experience easier and more digital is where we need to start. So things like vocal computing is it something on the horizon that I think will be incredibly interesting in how we leverage it in healthcare. Um, the Google Trust API, which many of you are, I'm sure are aware of, the idea that we could actually eliminate passwords and maybe use multiple data sources to actually know who we are when we come into the healthcare system is incredibly exciting. And I think if you do those three things, do those four things, I think you'll get to a personalized and precise experience. And that's really what I think our lessons at Stanford have taught us so far to date. To date. Thank you.